Yo guys, what is going on? Nickname is just Yellow and today this Norwegian hardcore PC gamer is gonna go through the launch commands of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. So um, let's find the launch commands first, shall we? Uh, you wanna right click on the game uh, CSGO right here and then, then you wanna click on properties. Uh, here in general you'll find the set launch options. Click on that and you're already to the place of uh, the beginning, okay? So um, uh, later on in this video I'll just go through all of these commands. And as a warning initially here, you can try and copy and paste uh, the, the, this kind of big ass launch option command that I got in the description. Uh, I'll just post it there in, for the future so that people can, you know, see what they like, what they might try out and stuff like that. But just a warning, if you're not customizing it completely and perfectly for your computer, it's not going to work properly. Just mainly, mainly just because... Uh, there's a big difference from uh, different resolutions that people like to use, but also the Hertz frequency uh, from a computer that is running 144 Hertz monitor compared to, uh, for example, a 70 or 65 or 60 or whatnot. So uh, keep that in mind and try and customize it and adapt it towards what you already got, okay? Which is what we're gonna go through now, uh, okay? So essentially you all you you probably already have it. So yeah, let's uh, let's go on from there. So you've just copy pasted this uh, this entire launch option command thing. How the hell do you customize it so that it will work for you? Okay, I'm just gonna go through what we need to edit. I've already done a lot of extensive Google searching about all of these options. I know that they either work or just not do any harm or they better the situation for your PC frame rate wise, uh, time wise in which it, it will actually lower the loading time of your game and shit like that. So yeah, okay, let's, let's go, shall we? So the first little section here is the height of the pixel rate of your monitor and then uh, uh, the width first I meant to say and then the height. You can set this to whatever the hell you want uh, to as long as it has these spaces and you know the, 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 the actual you know fucking button letters you know you know you, you get the point like they have to be in this kind of pattern okay so they gotta be a space in between the first number gotta be a space in between every of these commands okay other than that you can change these numbers to whatever the hell you want to whatever resolution as long as your monitor's maximum is big enough okay so yeah uh next going here is the uh, frequency uh the frequency and the refresh rate of your monitor and your game, you need to set these to whatever the hell you got. So if you got 60, just change the 144s to 60. If you have been able to overclock your monitor to let's say 78 hertz, which uh, I got a guide in which you can learn how to do that, and the benefit is noticeable by the way, um, in that case you should change it to 78. You'll probably get the deal by now. Uh, processor heap is good, no big deal. Same goes for Novid. Novid actually removed the intro introduction video for your Steam game. Uh, all Steam games mainly, but also CSGO. So uh, that's very nice to have. And no joy removes the joystick kind of data files whenever you load the game. So technically speaking, it's a nice little extra thing for terrible PCs, in which will allow them to perform better. Uh, the high, that yeah, that that's the prioritization of your computer, uh, and you know whether or not you pr prioritize CSGO. If you got a lot of computer programs running, having this one on high right here will help out the game a little bit. But well, other than that, it does not to do uh, too much for the game. Uh, the tick rate right here um, does not really do too much as far as I know, uh, but it does not hurt having it there. Uh, there will be one extra in the auto exit file if you ever set up one in which you need to do. It will allow your game to just run a lot better for the future. Uh, nevertheless, uh, just doubling down on it doesn't hurt I've experienced, but the main point I wanted to get across here is that um, it's a thing, and it's a very good thing. Apparently, it doesn't work in the command thingamabob here, the launch command. But uh, it's better to just have it in the auto XA anyways, so it does not hurt having it there for future reference and stuff. So yeah. Anyways, uh, threads. You need to customize this to whatever kind of a processor your computer have. Uh, you should just try and find your CPU and just check it up and see what kind of core system it has. If it's six cores, four cores, eight cores, and then you just set it. To whatever uh, or whatever it resembles or re very close by. Let's say that my CPU, for example, it has eight cores, in which it does. Uh, setting it to something right beneath, well, in most case scenarios, you know, may make the game perform a little bit better than worse. Uh, so yeah, that is why I got mine to six and not eight. 
despite my max being 8. I mean, you can set it to 7, but uh, you can do and test that out however you like. So let's move on here to Mat Q Mold 2. Not too important. Uh, all I can remember is that it's one of the few commands that work, and it's something about the graphical stuff and making it work a lot better and more smooth. And uh, in the ending here, we got the execute, and then the name of the execute file. You can set the name to whatever you want it to be, but uh, that requires the actual file's name to be changed. Uh, you'll learn that eventually, and I'll make a guide about the auto.exe file, because it's very essential, uh, and it's a little bit advanced, but when you get this stuff done, it's gonna make your, your game just run so much better in general. Anyways, uh, executing the auto.exe, it's essentially like an extra config, like config file with all your personal settings in, and you can uh, like customize it a lot more than just the in-game settings, uh, which means that if you got this little line right here, it will instantaneously be launched and executed when you start the game, in which more effectively will load in the 128 tick from earlier that I, I briefly mentioned in a bullshitty manner. So that's the auto exit for you. In the end we got the CL Force Preload 1, which actually helped me out in a couple of uh, random maps with a uh, frame rate. That might have been a bullshit bug with uh, Valve or my graphical driver. Still, having it on has given me better results than having it off. Uh, even though, again, if you people are experiencing anything opposite in that sense, uh, please feel free to turn it off or test it out or whatnot. So hopefully this helped you people out. Now your game should be a little bit more set whenever you launch it. And uh, keep in mind that it could be nice to save the one, this one string right here that you have customized for your PC and save it in a text document somewhere so that whenever you uh, need to, you know, change computer, change place, etc. A lot of the settings uh, that are the most basic will already be set. As a last little note, there's gonna be a lot of uh, config, uh, I, I meant to say launch options, yeah, uh, out there that are absolutely worthless. I've done all the research, a lot of them are worthless, and a lot of them you'll already be able to set in the options in the game instead, or in the auto exit file, so you should rather do that than just wasting it on putting it down here uh, three, four, five times when it does nothing. One of the, the, the popular launch commands that is a waste is the raw input. That's just gibberish, you should rather set that on in the settings. Uh, wasting space and time right here on that topic is just a waste. So hopefully this helped you people out, hopefully you now got your game uh, set up better. And if you want to support everybody else who enjoy this YouTube channel, we got a lot of options for that. That's uh, gonna be in the closer right now. So we got Patreon, in which you do get to partake in a giveaway. And then we, on the sideline, uh, which in which you don't get to partake in the giveaway, we got the skin donation stuff, if you want to support the YouTube channel. So, uh, thanks for watching, hopefully you found this helpful, have a nice day, and don't get beastified when you play.